Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how easy it is to create a panorama in On One Photo Raw 2020. Before we begin, I'd like to mention that very recently I worked on a project for On One Software. That project was how to create a low key portrait. We started out in my studio with the model and I talked about the lighting and the background and my thought process that I go through when I'm creating a portrait such as this. I talked about the depictive space, the mental space, and then I actually took some images. Then what I did was I took those images over into On One uh, Photo Raw 2020 and I demonstrated how I go about processing the image. Now, initially, On One Software was going to have this video available to their On One Plus members only, but because of the COVID-19 pandemic, On One Software has decided to make this video available and free to everyone. So, in the description below this video, I have a link to On One's website where you could watch my video for free. Now, as far as today's video, I mentioned we're going to talk about how to create a panorama. And really, it's super easy in On One Software, but there are just a couple things that you should look out for. First of all, I'm assuming you shoot raw. Your better, uh, your panorama will turn out better if you do some processing to the individual raw files first. Most notably, white balance. White balance is something that should be done to the raw file uh, be, because it just will look better than if you try to do the white balance to your resultant panoramic image. So definitely if you need to do anything with white balance, do it to the raw file. Also, if you're going to switch the profile, do it to the raw file. It just works out better. And sometimes um, some minor tone adjustments will work fine because quite often when you're creating a panorama, one side of the panorama might be considerably darker than the other side of the panorama. So it's nice to equalize the tone across those images and or make the tone just, you know, so they look similar tone wise. Now in this situation, I don't have that problem. Um, I just kind of stood in one spot, I handheld the shot, and I kind of twisted from the waist and took the series of images of the graffiti on the wall. So exposure-wise, they're all the same. But I still want to do some pre-processing to the individual images. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on one image first. I'm going to jump over to the Edit uh, panel, and I'm going to work in the Develop uh, tab and Tone and Color. And I'm going to do processing to this image, and then I'm going to copy that processing to the rest of the images, and that will save a lot of time. Now, specifically what I'm going to do here is first, I'm going to change the camera profile, I think, to On One Vivid or maybe Camera Vivid. Let's go with Camera Vivid. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of structure, and I'm going to pull Haze down a touch. And then uh, the white balance, let's see. Uh, let's see what auto, daylight, auto and daylight, not really doing much there. Cloudy, cloudy's pretty, pretty uh, colorful, uh, for lack of a better term. Uh, let's go with auto. Let's just go with auto on that. I think that's fine. And we're going to add some saturation, maybe up about plus 10. So I'm happy with that. Detail, I'm not going to do anything there. I'm going to turn that right off. We have lens corrections turned on, so that's good. So now I processed this first image. Didn't do a lot to it, but I did change the profile, which is significant, and the uh, white balance, which also is significant. Also, let's just go, let's go with daylight. All right, so um, that is done on that first image. Now what I want to do is just copy this processing to all the other images. So what I'm going to do, I'm clicked on the first processed image, then I'm going to hold the shift key down and click on the last image. Then I'm going to go over here on the right and click on sync. And all I did was develop processing, so that is uh, highlighted right there, and we're going to click apply. So it's going to apply that processing to all the images going across. Now I'm ready to create the panorama. Now they're all selected down here, still selected. 
So I'm just going to jump over to the Browse module, and then I'm going to go down to Panel. And again, make sure they're all selected. Go to Panel. And what will happen is uh, it's going to load the images into the Panorama dialog box and uh, perform the uh, actual stitching of the Panorama and give you a preview of it. And uh, you'll have some options there that will allow you to uh, determine how it's cropped and whatnot. So here is the Create Panorama dialog box, and I'm going to maximize it so we can better see it. And you can see it, it did a great job on the panorama. It stitched perfectly, as a matter of fact. Even this like cable that's going across here, I don't know if that's a telephone line or if that's cable that's going into the brick wall, you can see that that is perfectly stitched together without a hitch. Now, we go over to the right and we have different types of stitching options, that's the type. And by default, it's gonna to go to auto. And there's two choices, a spherical, and if you click on that, you can see, and that's what I think it chose. And then collage. And if you go on that, it might take a while to recompose it to show you that. And you can see it, it looks pretty much the same. We'll go back to auto for the sake of argument. Now, once uh, it creates the panorama, there's going to be some blank pixels. And there's actually going to be quite a few in this instance because I handheld this shot. I just stood in one spot and twisted like along the waist, so took the shot. So that kind of makes a lot more, um, you know, blank pixels. So if you go on none, you could see that um, it's a little jagged up in here uh, because, again, I handheld it. So then you could crop it or you could just warp it to kind of fill in those spots. Warp often will kind of distort the image and this won't be the choice you would want to use if you have buildings in the shot. So if you did a cityscape, uh, the buildings often will get tilted and distorted. So you don't want to use warp to fill. Now in this case, it's distorting the bricks and I don't want to distort the bricks. So we're just going to stay with crop and then the file size. Sometimes these panoramas get super huge and you don't want to create such a huge file. So you could uh, change the size to 50% of the original uh, panorama. In this case, I'm going to keep it at 100. And then once on one creates the panorama, do you want to open up in the browse module, develop module, or effects module? And I'm just, we'll open right up into the develop module and we'll go down to the lower right hand corner and click on save. Now it's going to actually create the panorama. And it's going to, again, once it creates the panorama, it's going to open up in the develop module. All right, our panorama is created. It opened up in the develop module. And as you can see, it's right here. I'm going to get rid of the film strip by hitting the E key on my keyboard to give us a little more room. Now I could continue processing. And I did mention that um, you should create or you should choose your profile with your individual raw files. As you could see, it's bl uh, blanked out here. So I can't do it now. That's why you should do it um, on your original raw files before you create the panorama. Now, as far as the white balance, you can choose a different white balance, but actually the white balance is more effective and more natural looking if you do it to the raw files. So that's again why I suggest you do uh, that adjustment with the raw files. Now, actually, I'm going to jump right over to effects here and let's just finish this up. I'm going to add uh, my favorite uh, filter, the dynamic contrast filter and um, just leave the default settings, but I'll bring opacity down a little bit and then maybe we'll just add a bit of a vignette on it. Uh, just a subtle vignette like that. And I think I'm done. So that's how easy it is to create a panorama in on one photo raw uh, 2020. And as you can see, it really does a great job, even on an image that I handheld and stood in one spot. So the uh, plane of the lens wasn't um, just flat to the wall at all times. It was always on a little bit of an angle and it would also often create distortions and stuff that affect your panorama. And here you can see it did a great job. So, that's it for this video. Again, I just want to remind you to check the description below this video so you could get a link to On One's website and you could watch my video on how to create a low key portrait. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.